Hi, this is Jim Laval, Director of Education for Infinite Allergy Labs. Today, we're going to discuss the importance of zonulin and histamine testing. You know, we're excited about the new test that we're offering where you can get both zonulin and histamine values because it can give you a tremendous amount of insight as to what's going on with immunologic reactions as well as permeability of the gut. So zonulin is a family of proteins that were discovered in 2000 at the University of Maryland, and it's the only known physiologic modulators for intracellular tight junctions that are in the gut. So it's the intracellular tight junctions of the epithelial tissue of the gut lining. It's the only human protein known to reversibly regulate intestinal permeability. And generally that permeability is tightly controlled but it can be dysregulated by a variety of things, including microbiome composition and function. And when that occurs, uh, antigen trafficking control is lost. It can lead to loss of mucosal tolerance and can create heightened gut permeability. Zonulin uh, is also affected by gliadin, a glycoprotein from wheat. It activates zonulin signaling via the zonulin receptor positive IEC6 and KCAL2 cells, and zonulin is released into that cell medium with subsequent zonulin binding to the cell surface. That creates a rearrangement of the cell cytoskeleton that relates to those tight junctions. There's a loss of occludin in the zonulin one protein protein interaction. It increases monolayer permeability, and then increases immune and autoimmune consequences due to this. Um, this obviously was a study from 2006 in the Scandinavian Journal of Gastroenterology. So what can cause altered zonulin activity? Food intolerance, as in gluten, but other foods can do it as well. Dysbiosis or infection, elevations in cortisol, traumatic brain injury or concussions, metabolic inflammation or metaflammation, with the increase in inflammatory cytokine and, and chemokine production. And then also, you know, approximately 20% of drug therapy, somewhere between 20 to 24% of drug therapy can alter the microbiome in the gut. And in some cases can directly lead to alterations in gut permeability and alterations in zonulin. So in the test, you'll see that high levels of zonulin are indicative of gut permeability or otherwise known as leaky gut. Uh, ideally, it would be below 45 nanograms per milliliter, uh, which is the normal range. And so if you're above that and we have elevated zonulin, then you know that gut permeability is enhanced. So typically, if you look at this in a stable gut microbiota, the tight junction competency uh, is, is maintaining that gut integrity and so you don't have excessive zonulin path activation. So there's controlled antigen trafficking. You could have uh, transcellular antigen sampling that occurs via the enterocyte. Lysosomes within the enterocyte break it down and therefore you get controlled antigen trafficking. When you get gut dysbiosis, you can get excessive zonulin pathway activation leading to abnormal intestinal permeability. So if you look on the right-hand side, uh, you can see that with zonulin being upregulated and the zonulin receptors being activated, the tight junctions are loosened and therefore there's excessive antigen trafficking that occurs via absorption through the mucosal barrier, which triggers increased cytokines, increased inflammatory signaling, uh, T-cell activation, and of course the loss of immune tolerance. So the other important chemical that we're measuring in our test is histamine. So histamine is a biogenic amine. It occurs at various degrees in many foods. Uh, it acts as a neurotransmitter, of course, there is histamine intolerance, which can result from a, a disruption in the equilibrium of accumulated histamine and the inability for histamine to be degraded. So there's a loss of diamine oxidase. So what are the causes of this? Dysregulation of the gut microflora, 
uh, impaired degradation of orally supplied histamine due to diamine oxidase deficiency. It could be genetic or acquired. Uh, and any of this can lead to excessive histamine response. So if you look at histamine metabolism, it's pretty interesting because if you can notice on the right side, the histamine metabolism uh, is due to methylation. So anytime there's errors in methylation uh, or inadequate methylation, we could see a buildup uh, in histamine. Uh, the other process is the use of diamine oxidase. Now, if you look to the, uh, the left, you see that the imatazole acetaldehyde and the acetaldehyde dehydrogenase enzyme is partly responsible for the breakdown products. However, if someone has uh, heightened candida dysbiosis, candida byproducts of its metabolism in increases acetaldehyde and depletes acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. So many times you'll see people that have chronic candida issues are very histaminergic. And this is because when you have candida disruption or dysbiosis, it alters the capacity for aldehyde dehydrogenase because of the excess loading of acetaldehyde production that occurs in people uh, with candida. Uh, and uh, so this is a pretty significant finding uh, and it's a pathway that you have to, to gain some control over because it's going to take proper methylation as well as proper control of dysbiosis, especially yeast-related dysbiosis, to really manage histamine. So with histamine testing, you know, there's histamine intolerant symptoms that are pretty wide ranging. So from diarrhea to headaches to obviously upper respiratory tract symptoms, asthma, hypotension, arrhythmias, uh, you know, urticaria, flushing, digestive issues, fatigue, uh, sympathetic nervous system dominance. Uh, you can consider using a low histamine diet or by identifying specific foods that are triggering an IgE response. Uh, and remember that decreased acetaldehyde dehydrogenase via candida dysbiosis can just be a, the main factor that's contributing to that histamine intolerance. So when you look at histamine intolerance, the, the, the consequences of it are wide reaching. So a lot of times you like to think of it as just the allergic response, but you can see alterations in estrogen metabolism. You can see dysmenorrhea, uh, changes in the gut. So diarrhea, constipation, stomach aches, um, cramps. Uh, there's uh, changes in hematopoiesis and uh, bone marrow signaling, changes in neurotransmitter release that affect the central nervous system, which can lead to symptoms like vertigo and headache and nausea and circadian rhythm arousal, uh, changes in body temperature. You know, so it's wide ranging. And then if you look at the cardiovascular system, tachycardia, arrhythmias, vasodilation, leading to you know, issues like hypotonia, hypertension, anaphylaxis, arrhythmia. And then of course, even the respiratory tract, congestion of the nose, uh, which we already mentioned, bronchoconstriction, dyspnea. Uh, so there's a wide net of symptoms that are associated with histamine. And you know, getting control of histamine release, it's more than just mast cell regulation. Uh, when histamine genes get turned on, potentially virtually every cell can start to create histamine. So there's high histamine foods that you can eliminate, but uh, one thing to consider is testing for food allergies in addition to testing for histamine, uh, because you may pick up certain foods that have now rendered an IgE or an IgG4 response that can be driving the IgE and histaminic release. So there are foods too that are reported to block the DAO enzyme. So, you know, alcohol can aggressively break down diamine oxidase, black tea, uh, energy drinks, mate teas, herb herba mate teas. All of these are you know, drinks that can affect diamine oxidase and therefore create an artificial threshold 
of heightened histamine in relation to diamond oxidase. So I hope you try the, the new test. We're very excited about our zonulin and histamine uh, test module. Uh, when you use this in combination with food allergy screening and, and uh, testing, it can be an invaluable way to help people through a multitude of symptoms that they can be experiencing because of immunologic shifts or reactions that are occurring in the gut.